contract has been changed since uh, 19 whatever 20s uh, and uh, uh, and therefore it, it's time to revise and something like that. So that you're giving like a general kind of overview about the whole situation. And then the gap is obviously, you know, the problem that whereby you'd be talking about uh, currently, this is the issue uh, where, you know, pregnant women are not, you know, uh, do not have secured jobs. And then a kind of also what might you be your, and the, I, I like that you mentioned that the key issues down there, but also what might be your, uh, envisioned state, future state. Uh, so how might, uh, maybe in a line, right? Uh, uh, what would it look like for women in this organization in the future, right? So you essentially, your problem statement is, it's literally summarizing an entire slide, but with like three or four sentences. So that you have the current issue, the current state, you kind of have what's what's gone wrong, which is the gap of the whole thing. And then you kind of have, this is your kind of envisioned state for the women in this organization. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then you, you can be a little bit more general there in that sense and about uh, not just the contract, but, you know, just generally the, the quality of life for uh, women employees will increase. Uh, due to you know certain things that you might want to do uh, later on in the slide, so you have to give that kind of three. What is the past? What's the context in the past? What is the current issue? And then what is your future state? So if you can have that, uh, you can definitely uh, the key issues part I like because that that really pulls the thing out. Uh, so it's nice to kind of separate that out. But if you can summarize these three parts in that first part. Uh, that would be great. Okay, okay. I guess we will amend that accordingly. Mm -hmm. And um, any other remarks you would like to make on our slides on the other parts? Uh, I okay. Let me just take a look at uh, overview. Let's see retention. So I think also. I mean, definitely the policy amendment is going to be, you know, pregnant as students will not be dismissed uh, during their, you know, when, they, when they're pregnant. Um, but also that is, you know, it's almost like, it's like a stop gap situ uh, situation, I would say, because yes, this is the problem, uh, but it's also indicative of a larger problem in the organization, right? Uh, and the larger problem is, you know, uh, 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 gender inequality. Uh, so essentially what, what you might want to say here, the policy amendment will not only include, uh, I mean, because this is the bare minimum they can do not to dismiss pregnant women. Uh, and, and really nobody should be clapping in their hands for that if they put that you know, uh, in, in their uh, policy. I think what they should then say in the policy amendment is, you know, how is, uh, uh, the policies are going to change uh, just generally for women. Uh, and you can mention that, I think maybe take a little bit, like so you have a big header that kind of says that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, policy amendments will follow current gender uh, best practices in gender, you know, uh, uh, gender studies, gender inequality, uh, you know, uh, area, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe, and obviously this is going to be a short-term goal uh, that the pregnant uh, as well as are not going to be dismissed. And then long-term goal is like you can follow that. Uh, but then policy should be more, more encompassing, I would say, uh, because if people don't usually do policy amendments that much. So when they do it, they, they usually when they would take the opportunity to go through the whole gamut of the policies that they have and then, you know, change where necessary. Yeah, uh, actually, so that part you, I will be mentioning in this part, this gray box here, implied adjustments to a new contract of a company. So this part, uh, once I've done the town hall and cross-check with the lawyers, um, when making the adjustment time, I will be specific and saying which clause of the contract I will implement the new policy, whereby uh, we won't be terminating the pregnant women, we'll allow them to take a break and all that, and we'll also uh, include the gender equality part. Okay, 
But um, okay. if you think that I should also mention in the first slide, I will do that. But I'll actually yeah, I think the first slide should come uh, be a, a little bit more general, I think. Okay. Uh, but you can definitely put in like brackets or something. Uh, but obviously, the judges will know, uh, you know, this is a larger problem in the organization. That's why, you know, it, it has to be an overhaul uh, about all the kind of gender uh, related stuff. But then, you know, when you come to this part, that's when you can kind of say that obviously this is your short term goal. Uh, you have the long term goal and like you can you know kind of do this whole chart out uh, I, I think this works as it is i think all right okay great yeah thank you thank you i guess we'll put in gender equality into our amendments as well um other than that is our short term and long term goals okay mm -hmm. What do you mean by improvement of selected aircraft to adapt to less stewardess? Yes, so we are thinking about like um, just because sometimes they have to take a break right from their seventh or sixth month onwards. So we have incorporated new technology firstly to support the pregnant women. Also, we have also came up with new technology to in case we are lack of one stewardess or stewardess present in the aircraft, they can still manage with our high tech installments the new installments yeah so we're using technology as a way to sort of compensate mm. I, I guess yeah i think maybe at, at first glance that doesn't come out from that sentence oh um so i i, I just didn't know what you what you were trying to say with that sentence so perhaps you can reword that okay. uh uh you know um I guess you know something along the lines of improved technolo technological advancement within uh -huh. a given aircraft to reduce okay. the capacity of stewards at a given time, uh, whatever you know, something like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, I guess you know, on a flip flip side, uh, just to be devil's advocate here. So, if let's say CEOs realize that they can do with fewer as stewards, <laughs> would they not just fire them? <laughs> just to be a devil's advocate you know just in case a judge asks you that maybe that's something you need to think about i mean moralistically you shouldn't but we also know reality if uh if they don't need somebody they won't keep them they become redundant right uh won't they just like half their uh workforce in that sense uh, so just think about that uh that question may or may not come um, but or, or either that, um, or you kind of mentioned that you know, uh, regardless uh, whether or not the efficiency is increased, uh, stewards will be uh, you know the, the, these stewards will have different job scopes or different functions, you know, during during that uh, during that time. So there no one no one will be let go, you know, uh, or something like that uh, because. Yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're a judge is one of a very business-minded person, it's definitely going to think about that. Yeah, yeah, true. I would. I would, I would think, oh, if you don't need them, why are you keeping them, right? Um, uh, at least you like, point it out now so you can prepare for it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, reward and appraisal system. Okay, long-term counseling campaigns for women and children. Goals. Um, stress management counseling. Um, so I guess maybe that again the wording in the second one might might require a little bit more uh, attention. Um, so the counseling campaign uh, from women uh, NGOs. I think in counseling, I mean counseling is one thing. These these terms mean very specific things. Yeah. Right? Uh, I would say. Uh, Appropriate. Yeah. Are are you? I mean, I, I think maybe I want to get also the idea. Are you trying to say that you will involve these uh, NGOs, like this, uh, this specialist who work yes. with women's issues? Yes. Um, so our plan is to do a, a long life collaboration with a women led NGO regarding okay. women empowerment. So, what they'll do is first they will guide us on how to carry out the campaign. This campaign will be emphasized for a year, but the tradition will be followed out throughout the company. And they will also organize seminars. In their seminars, we will be targeted to all the current employees right now. 
but okay. it will also be available for all the new employments that we have in the future years. That's why it's like a long-term collaboration with them. Okay, so it's like a consulting service. Then you have to go back, you have to word your, your wordings properly. Uh, so you'll probably have to say uh, to uh, engage uh, consulting services, like gender equality consulting services to advise the organization in key decision-making process uh, regarding uh, you know, uh, contract, blah, 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 whatever there is to do with, uh, with women, right, in, in that organization. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't come up. I mean, because counseling is a very specific term. Uh, and your judges might think, why are you giving them counseling, right? You know, like, are we getting a shrink in or, you know, um, so I changed that, I would say. Uh, I think a lot of the, you have to be very careful with the term. So I think, uh, and, and if I was a judge, right, honestly, I would probably not take so deep of a look. If you have any 15 minutes, I would probably won't take too deep of a look in these like, minute things. It's good to have. Um, and it's wonderful to know that you have thought it through. But from a judge's standpoint, if that first slide didn't get yeah. into their head, yeah. then you have lost them. Yeah. Right? So this, this, these slides need to be very, very good, uh, very, very clear uh, as to what you know it, it is. Um, yeah, when is the deadline for you guys to send us off? Uh, 12, 12 p.m. today. 12 p.m. today. Yeah, so I guess you'll have to work. You have one hour to work. That's nah, fine. This. We can yeah. do it. Yes, can, can. Yeah. Is there um, any other general kind of slides here that maybe I can no. take a look and if I can tell you it makes sense or not? No, because this uh, the, the first few slides that you've made a remark on will be saved by the CEO at the starting of her speech. So what mm -hmm. you say is correct. If we do not get to manage to capture the attention of the judges or the media, um, then technically whatever we're saying is you know not emphasized enough. So mm -hmm. yeah, these are the main slides that I feel like they will capture a lot of attention on because all the other slides is just be a short um, remarks of how our progress will be happening mm -hmm. in the timeline spoken. So it's not really something to right. emphasize on. It's the especially the fourth, mm -hmm. fifth, and sixth slides. Yeah, that and I guess maybe also in the future when you guys are doing something like this, just get a third party to read it, like just to go through somebody who has nothing to do with it and the best person probably to get it is you know uh someone is not in the team like get your yeah. moms your dads to read it right and if they can understand it and it, that's that's how it should be you know if the third party can who has nothing to do with it can understand it then you have succeeded mm -hmm. if they they have like i have no idea what you're talking about then you know that you're probably putting in too many jargons you're probably putting in uh you know, uh, uh, too many kind of in-group terms that you guys as a group have come up with. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I understand. I understand. So, um, also, so speaking on the context of counseling, we will be doing a counseling. I mean, the HR officer will be doing a counseling because in the case study, um, they did say that the managers were very dissatisfied with the amount of uh, backlash that they received from the female workers, right? Uh, because they were striking against the amendment, the clause of terminating a pregnant woman. So um, we'll just do a short pausing session to speak with the managers and just to make sure that they're not affected by it and to make sure that they can still carry out their work. I think this is like a common practice that carries out in uh, any working organization. Okay, so I'm again, I'm going to be very uh, ask you to be very careful about the term counseling here. Okay. So are you actually getting a certified uh, psychiatrist to come in to do it because only then it can be considered counseling right or are we asking the hr team uh with you know hr knowledge are, are they doing like a one-on-one -on -one kind of discussing yeah. uh the problem so those are two different things they usually wouldn't use the term counseling okay in that hr context yeah what what would you rather it be called i would just say uh you know uh support sessions or you know one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh with the managers uh by you know hr but the hr personnel or whatever uh but yeah I, i'd be very careful to use the term counseling um because i think that can only be used uh with with you know certified uh physicians understand listen all right yeah i shall make amendments to that too yeah i guess other than that um for me it's Particular. 
Wendy here. Mm, nothing from me. Okay. Uh, anybody else would like to ask anything? No? Okay. Yeah. I guess this is our questions. Any overall remarks uh, regarding our progress? Um, I mean, I like the fact that you guys took in like a lot of the suggestions that I mentioned yesterday. Um, I like the uh, loss of revenue somewhere. I remember seeing that um, loss of business. Yeah. Uh, you might want to change the employment spelling over there. And um, yeah. And yeah, it, it, I think it's, it's really good that you have those things. Uh, like definitely the more business-minded of the judges will will like it this part right and they really think about oh you know there's, there's definitely lots of potential there uh and uh, do you know the background i mean i am pretty, pretty sure you know the background of the judges right yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh i guess you know it's, it's not necessarily that, that this, this case i mean if you do your work well you should anyone should be able to yeah but it's also good to sometimes take to some of these things according to the background of your judges. So if you know that the person is a CEO for a Fortune 500, you know they're going to think about money. Like if you yeah, know yeah. they're like a person who's in like uh, psychiatry or whatever, like or humanities, you know they're going to be thinking about the policy part. Uh, and each of them will be looking at different parts, right? Uh, so you kind of want the best mark from all of them. It, it's a little bit of a game in the system, but... Uh, it just it's just how the real world works. So I think this will definitely appeal to CEOs, all the CEOs and the judges, the uh, business people. Uh, your policy part I think should should appeal to uh, anybody else who's in the humanity side uh, yeah. of things. I see a very round chart there. What 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 is that? Oh, uh, is it this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. It's going to take off landing expenses. Take off landing fee. This is interesting. Uh, however, if I was looking at this, right, I would probably ask you, what does 23% mean? What does 21% mean? Like, how much is this? Like, what is my revenue uh, of my company? And, and therefore, what does it mean that 23%? Because it, you know, 23% of uh, a billion is a different thing than 20% of a million, right? Uh, uh -huh. So I guess, and I would, I would think about that uh, because percentages only make sense in terms of the, uh, the, the total. Uh, and also I'm just curious, why did you come up with this number? Like these numbers, how did you decide these numbers? I think it's all based on assumption. Yeah, because we weren't given any um, mm. numbers and also we just wanted to make an assumption. Right. Most of our okay. things is based on assumption. Okay. Yeah. So I, mean, I think it should be okay because you only have 15 minutes. But just in case someday you guys do a proper pitch yeah, uh, yeah. to a proper, you know, organization of donors, right? This will be a place where they will poke you uh until yeah. you want to cry. Right? Yeah. They'll be like, why is this 23%? Why is that not 30% over here? Why is that 15%? Only fuel yeah. cost, only 4% may, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they will ask all these questions, right? So it's just something for you guys to think about uh, as you are doing this. Um, is there anything else? Uh, I feel like the will... judges, no, I feel like we don't know who is our exact judges because we'll be in breakout rooms. But I think we did uh, cover a, a, a rough of both the humanity as well as the financial okay. mindset. Hmm. Not specific into one direction, but I think we covered that on both. Yeah, definitely. You should, should have, you know, should target all of them. Uh, like I said, if you do your thing properly, uh, you should have hit things, uh, but it's also just just to understand who your audience is in that sense, yeah. uh, what they might care about a little bit more. Uh, what about your closing, your final kind of um, last thing? It's just you a short summary, which I think I need to reword some of the things mm -hmm. uh, after your remarks. Yeah, we're just going to repeat back what we stand for based on our improvements and mm -hmm. um, also handle the backlash part. Mm -hmm. of the female workers and how we're going to carry it out and yeah that's all mm -hmm. Thank sort you of like answering that back that. the problem statement we have given so yeah okay so short term long term what about this uh so the first two is short term is it oh no this is really this is just like a normal points right 
Yeah, for the first one, it'll start with like, we want to emphasize again, what is the change in our policy? So we just mm -hmm. have to emphasize back there that we are not going to let go any of our pregnant as students. Mm -hmm. And how will it be done? We emphasize again that um, all our students will attend training for the new um, yeah, cabin improvements. And then we talk about the short term one, which is the attending seminars by the NGOs. Then we, um, because at the same time, there are going to be overtime workers. If let's say there's not, we cannot upgrade all our aircrafts. We still need uh, more workers into one plane. There was there is going to be that bonus um, reward uh, system that's going to be put to place. And finally, we end with the long term um, campaign hmm. that is hosted by our own HR. Yeah, yeah. That's the long term one. Okay. So I think I mean I mean from what if if I see this, what I would say, uh, like there's five things here. And essentially, not just the all staff to attend seminars is a short term thing, right? Uh, pregnant, the, the policy change, immediate policy change is also a short term thing. Uh, the stewardess is training uh, for cabin new technology. I'm not sure if that's short term or long term or, or whatever. That could be either one. Uh, so I think just break it down to two things. Like short term, these are the few things that uh, uh, we're going to be looking at immediately. Um, and then kind of long term, uh, these are the things that we're going to be looking at. Uh, you might you don't have to be as uh, detailed about it as you were in the earlier slide, but I think your closing needs to be extremely uh, confident. What's and next, uh, if you guys, if you have like four minutes, right? Can you do a closing like to me? Let me see if I how much of marks I will give you people. <laughs> okay, Brandy, are you ready? Um, I give you the closing for what I've prepared. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Thank you, Jazz, for the detailing that you gave us, us earlier. So now we just want to wrap up really quickly for you guys what we've been talking about in the whole presentation is that we will emphasize that we will not be letting go any of our pregnant S to this because this does not, um, it does not pro uh, promote gender equality. And how we will be able to do that is that we will have training to put into uh, put into place by the technology improvements that will be carried out simultaneously with the awareness seminars, which is a short-term um, action that will be hosted by credit creditable women NGOs. And with the short, with the long for the long-term um, action that will be carried out would be the bonus for the air stewardess that opt for overtime, which will be closely monitored by their stress levels also, so uh, by the HR department, and also. To prove to our clients, staff, media, and also our stakeholders that Speedcare Airlines here is very aware on the position of women in our company and also in this industry, we work together for uh, equality among the workforce. And hence, we will have a long-term campaign hosted by our own HR department that will talk about the position of women in the aviation industry. So as a whole, despite this first step being a very small one, it would be the start to a more sustainable and equal working environment for all our staffs, regardless of gender. One that is secure, inclusive, and healthy for our staff because this would directly translate to the quality of their service and their productivity on the airline image. And with that, we thank you for listening to our presentation and um, have a good day. Right. Um, I think it, it, it's good. I think you're there about 70%. Uh, so what I would maybe not do is repeat these points again uh, because you're showing this, right? You're displaying this thing, right? Right. So I would not repeat it. Uh, they can read it for themselves. I would probably just, you know, uh, refer to it really quickly. But I will, I will kind of say, uh, you know, kind of just encapsulate the whole thing finally again and say that uh, we understand that we uh, there have been shortcomings in our, you know, way of working. Blah blah blah. Uh, and this has been a learning process for us and uh, taking this, we at blah, 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 take this very seriously. And therefore, these are some of the steps that we propose to be done in the short term and in the long term. And we are confident, blah, 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 that this blah, 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 blah will happen. And um, we, uh, we hope that you will remain with us uh, in, this, in this time where we are learning together. You know, all that kind, you kind of need to succinctly and be passionate about it, but you're not repeating those steps because you already told that them to them earlier on, right? Um, you're, you can just show it, refer it, um, and just have a human conversation with your 
with your judges at this point. You know, it's not about facts and points. It's about just leaving them with that last word that you're willing to change and you will change. And you are sorry for the fact that this actually happened and it will not happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Then you will get hung up. Oh. Okay, I guess we'll practice on that. I think we have less than a minute and then Jay wants to take a picture. Oh. <laughs> it's a very important thing. <laughs> right. Okay, I'll take a picture. Okay, I'll take a picture. Okay. Okay. Um, I can't see. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, another one is it? No, another one. Alright. Okay, another one. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marcus. <clears throat> Thank you. It's been an honor. And I think Hopefully, we'll just... it's been helpful. <laughs> yes. And right now, we just have to work on the changes, and I think we will be on the right path. I guess. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any last minute invites? Uh, try to be calm. Oh. You know, uh, you know, just think of them as, you know, just people just listening to your idea. Be passionate about it. Talk about it. Don't... Yep. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Poor guy. Jet knows how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everybody, a lot of changes. A lot of changes? Oh, thank La. you, guys. Bye bye. Oh, bye, bye, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, wait. Hello, Mr. Shankar. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, so we're discussing our about our slides here. So how do you so, want this to work? Uh, do you want me? Like you said, something you want to show me and then say, I, I give my opinion on it. Is there more questions that you guys have? How do you want to do this today? Uh, sure, we can, uh, we can have you take a look at our presentation, uh, our slides. These are the main points that we have identified. Mm -hmm. So the clarification of the situation. So this, on the March 11, the... Um, the amendment ordinance was implemented and the, 1, the originally 1,000 ringgit fine was raised to 10,000 ringgit fine for individual and also 50,000 ringgit became the maximum fine for business operation. And the compound um, compounds maximum are fixed irrespective of economic background at that time. And police can only issue compounds, not collect them. And the district health officers have the power to determine the value of the fines. So even though the issue was uh, the police officer B, gave the 50,000 compound to the burger store owner. He gave it because the police don't have the right to decide on the actual, to determine the value of the fine. So the police officer, usually they will only, uh, they will give out the maximum amount. Even for individuals fine, they, uh, they will be giving out 10,000 instead of like 1,000 or 1,500 according to their type of offenses. Uh, this the final the finalized amount of fine will usually will be decided by district health officer uh, according to their situation and types of offenses by appealing to them the compound can be reduced or waived. So the case is here on 25th April 2021 at 11 10 p.m. an hour past the curfew a burger store in Kelantan was charged. Uh, RM50,000 compound due to breaching a few SOPs. He violated the SOP, though, through operating beyond curfew, setting up tables for customers and failing to provide a body temperature scanner. It was also his second offense, between the business operation SOPs. Okay, and the problem uh, statement here just is for not a that... Moment there, hmm? okay, um... Do the judges already, they already know this, right? The prob that what is the problem, right? Yeah. Yeah, so then I'm going to uh, maybe just ask you if it was, you know, you because you only have 15 minutes, you don't have more than that. Uh, and is it worth kind of uh, reiterating um, this point too in, in so much detail? Um, because I, I like the clarification part, the top like four points, right? I think, and that also you can do very quickly uh, just to give them a sense, but, uh, I think I would I would probably 
one of the things I probably do is I also reduce the number of wordings here, uh, just to keep the slides just you know pretty simple because we don't want them to be. Uh, people they generally don't like seeing too many words in a slide. Uh, so you might want to just summarize this with like very one sentence, one sentence, one sentence, uh, and then you talk about it uh, as, as it kind of pops out. Um, just so you're not spending too much time here, I feel. Um, otherwise, I think at the moment you go in, uh, the, 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 I think the judges might feel like, oh, I'm being hit by a wall of text. Um, and that shouldn't be the, the situation. So I think remain it, but sim I think simplify this. Like if you can reduce this to every, like one sentence, one sentence, one sentence, uh, please do so. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think at that point, I think I don't, don't go too much. Maybe the next one, what's the, I want to see a problem statement. Uh, um, the problem how does statement. it look like? Yeah. The, uh, the problem statement is mostly due to the ineffective dissemination of information among the pub public and law enforcement. So it's the fact that the officer B didn't do anything wrong because he merely acts within uh, uh, what he should be doing, which is uh, identifying uh, someone who breaks the SOP and then uh, deciding the fine, whether or not he is an individual fine or a corporate fine. So since it's a burger stall, a business operation, so he gave out the 50,000 fine and also identify the type of offense, offense that he did. He uh, operate beyond the curfew and also the lack of the temperature scanner. But due to the ineffective dissemination among the public and detect and one of the lack of information is the absence of detailed aspects regarding compound payment and processes, which had generated misunderstanding between public and law enforcers. It's because the public aren't aware that this compound is actually negotiable with the uh, public health officer. So that's why uh, these things blow up. Mm. And there's also the lack of transparency on the guidelines to compound allocation. So uh, how much compound to give to this, uh, this kind of background? To mm. for this kind of offenses, they are made, aren't made transparent to the public, so that's why they thought that fifty k is too much. Um, I mean, fifty k is too much, but the lack of transparency on guideline means that the public don't know how much is right. Mm. I think Even also there are guidelines, the people don't um, know. I want to give some uh, comments here. Um, I see the problem here, uh, it, but essentially, your earlier clarification point. Uh, should be kind of merged with this problem statement. So that usually a problem statement will have, you know, a few elements. Uh, if you guys have read about it, uh, and it's, there's no right or wrong ways to, to do it, but what you will usually have is what is the situation around it, right? What's the situation around this issue? And I think you have captured that very nicely in your clarification part. What is the situation? Okay. Now, then what is the current gap? So basically, it's the problem like this, this, uh, this compounding and issue, blah blah blah. And then, what might be the uh, future state that you're looking for uh, once the uh, gap has been addressed? Uh, so you must have like kind of like these three, uh, three elements, so that in your problem statement itself, when you're talking about this to your judges, whatever. Essentially, that one slide is a summary for all your slides, you know, but very top level. Like, you know, it, it just tells your uh, person, uh, what you call your judges, that you, you know what you're going to be talking about. Um, and I mean, there, there are a couple of ways of doing this. I think there's one, I don't know if you guys have enough time, but I think one, uh, there's a website uh, around this, this, like, I think we just, let me see if I can find it for you guys. Uh, okay, yeah. I like to sometimes we'll go back and look at this and how to write like a, uh, it's a very simple way of writing a problem statement, but it's a very effective way of writing a problem statement. Uh, so what I would do here is take the clarification of your situation and then you know, merge it with the problem and then talk a little bit about your future, uh, future state uh, once you've done the, you know, once you've put all your solutions, but done all of that done in like 50 
words. Uh, so okay. essentially you're taking these two, you're reducing into just one slide and 50 words, your body uh, literally uh, spoke about the whole thing. Uh, it's good to have some of these things like in your notes. If for instance, if for instance, uh, uh, what you can is when you get questions, right? Uh, you might want, you might get questions around that situation. So you're keeping it as your, uh, you know, your answers to go. Uh, and it can be answered in the questions itself. You may not want to talk about the whole thing uh, uh, detailed by detail. Uh, so I think if you can follow that problem statement, I think because right now your problem statement only has the problem, uh, which is obviously the biggest part of it, but it needs to also address the situation, which is your clarification part, and then the, your future state, that the ideal state once you've done all your uh, solutions. Is that, is that clear, Afate? Yeah, so practically we will be like <coughs> repeating the uh, problems. We'll, we'll be repeating some of the clarification within the problem statement. Yes. Okay. So that would so... be the, the, the situation context around it. Uh, and then the, the actual problem, which is the, you know, some of these parts. Uh, and then the, uh, you know, the... Uh, what you call it, the solution, the proposed, not solution, but your ideal state, you know, what, what is the solutions that you are recommending the later slides have been done, what kind of ideal state you might, we might see there. And also like also the other thing here, right? Um, public and law enforcement. I think uh, I, I like the ineffective dissemination of information. Uh, because I think that is the larger issue. Uh, this is a, yep. the problem is a small part of the larger issue. Uh, so if you can essentially, you know, that might actually be one, that one sentence might be the only thing that you put in the slide. Uh, the, everything else, it's something like a bit more of a need to know uh, basis because obviously they've already read the case study. They know what the problem is, right? You don't have to go too deep into it. Uh, so yeah, try to see if you can fit this in like four to five sentence. I think uh, we only have 50 words, I guess. Uh, yeah, see if you can fit words. all of this. That's a real challenge for you, I think, uh, to just really just condense the whole thing. So like uh, just saying, this, just using the public wasn't aware that the compound is negotiable and isn't finite. That's not enough to like as part of the clarification of the situation. I think that's um, like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can put you can put that. I say because you only have 50, 50 words, uh, so you have to be very careful. Uh, you want to put the clarification part in this as well, and then you want to put your ideal state as well. So if everyone, if that, that's already three sentences, really, right? Minimum. Uh, so if there's ten words in each of these three sentences, already thirty words already. Uh, so you have twenty words to like play around. Uh, so I think really, really sit down and see how. I think you have listed this out, but now just see how you can condense um, all these things into that problem statement. All right. So let's take a look at the public, uh, how we will be handling the public's backlash. Okay. So uh, so here we said that we first will give clear estimation, explanation on the issue of the fine. So we, uh, which is through press statement, and then we'll introduce better policy to navigate further is future issue. And then we'll keep the public updated on the approaches to solve the problems. So uh, introduce better policy. First, we would like to create a more convenient, uh, knowing that the, the issue is uh, dissemination of information, we would like to create a more convenient and up-to-date single source of information on my sejahtera to avoid misunderstanding again uh, from resurf resurfacing again in the future. Again, I, I think my, my, my uh, what you call it, um, feedback would be the same, right? Too many words, too many words in your slides. Uh, so just reduce uh, as much as possible. You don't want to be showing them so many bullet points. Um, you, you want to be showing them just start the bigger point and then you're talking about it. Uh, and the other thing is also, I, I would say the kind of font color changing from white to black, that uh, in the blue and the white areas, that is usually not something that's very easy to see. 
uh, especially, I mean, uh, and not, not to say that the judges are old people, but uh, for the older crowd, even when I look at it, I'm like, huh, why is that? It's very hard for me to see. Uh, so make sure that, you know, all of it is standardized. If it's black font, make it black completely. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one, maybe. Uh, So this one for our second part of the presentation, how will you receive the, uh, resolve the dispute? Uh, first, we would like to clarify, these are mostly the details uh, that can be explained to uh, our orally. So we can freely remove it. And we also do an internal meeting between the police officer because this issue, uh, it seems that the dissemination of information isn't restricted to the public, but also within the law enforcement themselves because there's this conflict. And then this incident reflects that, the conclusion is that this incident reflects that neither police officer A nor B are in the wrong, but simply highlights the lack of clear direction in regards to approaching the compound, even within the law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful point. And also I just wanted to check again with you. Uh, so is this gonna be a part of the press statement? Uh, uh, no, because it, like what you mentioned, it doesn't make separate. sense to be. Or be separate, right? So you will you will mention it to them, right? At this point, just before. Yeah, I will, I will mention it point, at the start. Okay. At which point does the so Allah Allah you by this press statement to start? Uh, so like at the start, I will say uh, I will say that I would like to take a bit of your time, uh, everyone's okay. time, to like discuss on how we'll be uh, to it to tell you guys how we'll be presenting, uh, mm -hmm. our our session today. So we'll be dividing our presentation to two parts. The first part will be presentation because we would mm -hmm. like to keep it uh, as if it's a professional press statement. And the mm -hmm. second part will be restrict, uh, will be the presentation on topics that is irrelevant uh, on the requirements that is irre irrelevant to, the, to a press statement such as uh, resolving the disputes uh, and the benefits and shortcomings of our policies. Okay. Yeah, and then I will be, go on. Uh, be very, very press. clear about that, Fatin, right from mm. the get go. Uh, where you're going to go to say there's two parts and blah, blah, blah. Because otherwise, they might think that, you know, it, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really make sense. I think it's a good way to uh, and break it. And I think it's also something, something for facilitator to take note lah, next time uh, so that this thing is, you know, if, if it's going to be a press statement, then the whole thing needs to be a press statement. If it's going to be like points, the whole thing needs to be like a bit of points. So you cannot ask them to divide the time between the two. Uh, and I don't know how the judges might look at that as well. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think it's a good good idea. Uh, go ahead with that. Um, so maybe if, if you go to the uh, press statement part, and maybe if you can just give me a preview how you will do the press statement, and then okay. I can give you some... Uh, what you call it, feedback. <laughs> okay. So you will just be reading this out uh, as you go or how? Uh, I will act as if I wasn't reading it out. Okay. So Please, please do so right now, <laughs> so that okay. I can see how you, how you do it. Okay, wait a bit. I think I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in the beginning part, and then the closing part, lah. Okay. And you guys have timed yourself, right, for this? Hmm? Oh yeah, we have timed it. Okay. Okay, wait, I need to stop sharing and reshare. Okay. So maybe just start out uh, your beginning, your introduction, yeah. and then yep. those you can just skip straight away. You go to the end, end part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you just uh, do that. And I'll see, I'll give you some feedback there. On April 25th at 11.10 p.m., a burger stall in Kelantan was charged a 50,000 ringgit compound due to breaching a few SOPs that had been set for business operations. 
To clarify this issue, I would like to first clear up the setting of which this in incident had taken place. Due to the ever-changing state of law and regulation these days, it is understandable that there will be confusion in regard to the currently effective amendment ordinance. The amendment ordinance, effective March 11, replaces the general pen penalty provision in Section 24 of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988, as the original act was no longer adequate to contain the worsening COVID-19 pandemic in the country. This emergency legislation increased the general penalty of an offence under Act 342 to a fine not exceeding 100,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years. So the amount for compounding offences will also increase from 1,000 ringgit to a maximum of 10,000 and 50,000 for individuals and corporate bodies respectively. The ordinance is applicable in any area, be they in MCO, CMCO, or RMCO. Furthermore, do they issue the compounds? The police officer do not have the authority to collect them. Only the district health officers that, that have the power to determine the value of the fines according to the situation and types of offenses. Due to this reason, police officers are restricted to issuing the maximum compound amount to offenders as that is what stated within the ordinance. Any adjustments to the compound can be appealed with the district health officers and with their discretion, the amount can be reduced or even waived. It also had to be known that a discount rate system is also in place where the compound amount can be reduced from 25 to 50% of the original as long as it's paid within two weeks. Having said all that, let's now address the issue. Due to a report, a police officer visited the, the burger store at 11.10 p.m and discovered the business was breaching a few SOPs which were operating beyond the 10 p.m. curfew and failing to provide a body temperature scanner. It was also his second offense in breaching the SOPs for business operations. Though, small, though a small business, under the amendment ordinance, the burger store owner was still eligible to be charged 50,000 ringgit for consciously breaching the SOPs. Though seeming excessive, Keep in mind that the amount is always negotiable to properly reflect the offence and the socio-economic background of the offender, as long as an appeal was made with the district health officers. Further leniency will also be given, is paid early through the discount rate. In reflection of all this, we would like everyone to know that the purpose of the compounds aren't necessarily to punish, but to educate people on the importance of an individual in practicing collective responsibility in the pandemic situation today. After Martin, all, can I, can I pause you for a moment here, just, just yeah. for that, uh, because we have running out of time. I, mm -hmm. think, I think it's a good, uh, I, I like the facts that you presented, but I also think there might be a little too much facts in some ways, because one, or two, one thing is that you already repeated a lot of these facts in the earlier presentation, right? Uh, just, just, I'm also thinking in the whole, like how much of time you're taking for that, how much of time you're taking for this. Uh, and also what I feel at this point, I feel, uh, you know, if you think about really good effective press statements, it's not merely about the uh, details, which I think you've gotten really well. It's about the, the, the emotion that comes out, right? Um, and up to this point, in reflection of all of this, right, it's all about numbers, it's all about very dry uh, policy stuff. You kind of lose your audience by the time you get here, right? Um, and that is very important because you're gonna be marked on the, those, those, those areas, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so see if you can reduce the, uh, the information you're giving there, but also, I mean, maybe even when you start out, um, uh, you know, you start out with uh, just talking a little bit about uh, the situation, uh, not technical terms, but more on an emotional kind of uh, level. Uh, so when you start out, I guess you can say that we understand uh, there was an issue that's been brought, up, brought to us. Uh, we understand this is a big, and this is a big issue and it's very, uh, what you call it, uh, vital to Malaysians and blah, 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 blah. So you're kind of starting out with a bit of an emotional note 
And then you go into like this little teeny tiny details, not so many details. And then you come back to in reflection of this, uh, we want to let you know that it's not the purpose of punish and blah, 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 blah. Uh, otherwise, I think I, I hear the, the facts are very good, but you, you might lose your judges uh, essentially at the, by that point. By that point, they'd be like, oh, okay, there's too many facts. I don't want to hear about this, right? Um, so take that into account. Uh, there, there needs to be more emotionality here. You know, there needs to, when you present it. Um, uh, and I think maybe that, maybe just maybe your closing. Let me see how you do your closing. Oh, yeah. Maybe. So having all that, that, so we close with a proposal policy. <coughs> uh, do see me, keep in mind, in relation of all this, we'd like everyone to know that the purpose of compound aren't necessary to punish, but to educate people on the importance of an individual was more to... Also, with this proposed policy, we hope that any conflicts on the SOPs will cease and all citizens will be informed. Before concluding, we are certainly very concerned and took everyone's opinion on the biggest store issue seriously. To avoid such great alarms from repeating in the future, the authorities had reached a consensus and decided to differentiate the maximum amount compoundable between SMEs and larger business entities. 10,000 ringgit was set as a maximum from as far small and business uh, yeah, I forgot. Well, Henceforth, well, well, well. while the larger operation will be keeping the original amount of 50,000 ringgit. Nevertheless, with all that made clear, we hope that everyone will no longer be alarmed on the implementation of the amendment ordinance. We understand your concern and will certainly keep the public updated in regards to the appeal process of the burger store owner. I will not pass my floor to my partner, Mr. Bahar. So that's how I close. Should it be more emotional or something? Um, I think it, I think the wordings are fine, uh, but yes, just just your presentation of this, right? Um, just be not emotional, but uh, a little more, you know, like you are part of the you know the problem that like you're passionate about solving this. You know, you, you yeah. need to feel that, you know, that you're passionate in, in solving this. Uh, so intonation, yeah. lah. Yeah, intonation and you know, all those kind of things. Uh, I think that's generally okay, but I, I think uh, what I would say here is I see a lot of the stuff that you mentioned earlier on is repeated here again, right? So uh, that is double time for the same thing, right? Uh, so see I whether mean, or not the presentation is also stuff. yeah in the presentation. I mean the presentation part. is also like done at the same time as the uh, press statement. So like what we are saying. Uh, we are also like showing the presentation also. Okay, right, okay. So And even the problem statement, here, is it? When, when do you yeah. show the problem statement? Yeah. Oh, that part, okay. Yeah, so that's why on the problem statement, there's only the details about information uh, inefficiency. Okay. And then with this proposed policy is followed up by uh, I mean, not all of this. Uh, so and here we will show the problem statement. And then from here, we'll show the, um, how we approach the backlash. Lah. So mm. the slide that have the policy, our policy mm. about single source, uh, source of information, Masjatra. And then compound education guideline make transparent and advertising the SOPs. Okay, I think, I mean, I mean, you, you have to do work with what you have. Uh, but I think maybe perhaps, I, think, I guess the feedback, uh, not to the, more to the uh, MSGA team uh, is that uh, press statements are press statements, right? You're not going to be usually showing uh, slides during press statements. Yeah. Uh, so I think, uh, for the MSGA like team, I ensure that you know if you're doing press statement, then you're doing press statement. If you're doing slides, then you're doing slides, right? You're uh, doing presentation, just presentation. Yeah. 
So uh, there should be at least two parts to it, I feel, uh, essentially, uh, so that you know, it can be done properly. Uh, but I think, yeah, do, uh, do mention, I think from a, from a, do mention what were your struggles as well in doing this uh, and, and say what, because you're kind of letting the judges know what, what kind of issue that you have to face in terms of the structure. Uh, mm. But I think, yeah, it's good. I think material-wise is good. Just practice on more emotionality. Practice mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, I think you, that you have the calmness that you done, you, you have it very well. Just more of the emotion, right? Mm -hmm. As if you're memang the IGP and then you're like, you're very sorry about this. And, uh, you know, you really want this to change. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, it's really good, Athena and team. I think it's a uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, now, this could be a real press statement. It's really good. Really, really good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, for the advice. Thank you, Mr. Shankar. Hopefully, you have Bye, enough everyone. time to change stuff. <laughs>